All right. Good morning, Chair Postman, Member Garrett, Member Volandroff, staff and guests. Apologize for the delay. We had a couple technical difficulties in the boardroom. Uh, I believe we got everything worked out and we're ready to go. Okay, now I think I'm able to unmute. We can hear you, David. Great. Okay, good morning, everybody. Um, this is our first uh, hybrid board meeting, so um, uh, bear with us, but I think we're uh, in the groove now. We will convene the Liquor and Cannabis Board meeting for June 22nd, uh, 2022. Uh, first item on our agenda is approval of meeting minutes from the May 10th and May 24th uh, caucus. Uh, Meetings. Is there a motion to approve those? This is Ali. I approve the May 10th and May 24th board caucus meeting minutes. Yeah. And I second, second that motion. Great. Thank you. Then those are both approved. Uh, move to uh, uh, rulemaking presentation, and uh, we have public hearing on uh, rules, and we will uh, turn to Audrey Vasek. The Alcohol Policy and Rules Coordinator. I'm in oh. person today. Is this working? Look at that. <laughs> Good morning. Sorry I wasn't able to be there, but uh, appreciate you showing up. Hi, Audrey. Good morning. Good morning, board members, Yerton Volendroff, Chair Postman. So I'd like to provide some background prior to the public hearing on the CR 102 related to electronic transmission of documents for service and filing. So the CR 102 was approved by the board on May 11th and filed with the code revisor is WSR 2211033. To develop the CR 102 and proposed rules, we shared conceptual draft rules publicly through Gov Delivery in April, and three comments we received on the conceptual draft rules were included as attachment B to the CR 102 memo. Ultimately, no changes were made from the conceptual draft rules to the proposed rules, and in summary, the proposed rules adopt electronic transmission as an additional means for service and filing of documents. Electronic transmission is defined as including, but not limited to email, web portal, fax, or other similar methods. The proposed rule also outlines procedures for service and filing of documents by electronic transmission and describes how the date and time of delivery or receipt will be determined. The new rule section is needed to streamline and modernize business and adjudicative processes and bring a consistent approach to the issue across the agency. We anticipate this approach will benefit everyone that interacts with the agency as well as reduce potential impacts to the SMP or agency technology systems modernization project. While we haven't received any comments on the proposed rules so far, the public comment period is open until the end of day today. So in terms of timeline, after the public comment period closes today, if no substantive changes need to be made to the proposed rules, the earliest that the board could approve the CR 103 would be July 6, uh, which is the next board meeting. And if approved and filed on July 6, the rules would go into effect on August 6. So that concludes my presentation. I'm happy to answer any questions. I don't have any. Just uh, uh, thank you on behalf of the board staff for moving this along. Um, I know everyone's looking forward to it and it seems like we're close. All right, thank um, you. Same here, thank you. No other questions since I don't have anybody signed up for the public hearing, but um, just to make sure there wasn't a late uh, arrival for a public hearing on the electronic rules, uh, electronic service and filing rules. Seeing none, we'll close the public hearing then. Um, we're to the part of our meeting where we invite the general public to comment. Everybody is given four minutes uh, to speak, just four minutes. Uh, at uh, When you have 30 seconds left, as um, I think you all know, uh, Dustin will uh, break in and, and just remind you your time's just about up. Uh, and then we will ask you to uh, finish at, at four uh, minutes to keep keep this uh, uh, fair across the board and keep it moving. Um, when you do uh, uh, get called, we'll give you a, a second and you give us a second to find you and unmute, et cetera. 
uh, state your name, please, um, and affiliation uh, for the record. And just a reminder, as always, that uh, all our meetings are recorded and uh, the meeting will be available on our website uh, uh, soon after. So uh, with that, uh, the first person I have signed up is Christopher King. Terrific, can you hear me? Are we there? Terrific, listen guys. Uh, the first thing is, as y'all know, I'm a civil rights lawyer, I'm suspended. I'm gonna rejoin the bar this year. Okay, so I've never been disbarred. I have four grand out of the 11 grand I need. I'm gonna do that this year, because I'm tired of hearing the nonsense, all right? I could walk right out to that garage right now and sell that Triumph, and I'd be within $1,000. But I don't wanna do it that way. I'll do it on my own time, okay? So that's one thing, and by the way, all this talk about Ollie Garrett having walked with Dr. Martin Luther King as a child, that's fine, that's wonderful, that's esoteric, all right? It's more pressing that I've actually won like many, many civil rights trials and settled many civil rights trials. I have awards for my First Amendment conduct in New Hampshire. It's all been proven, it's all in the newspaper stories, okay? You know, the, the mayor, the Aldermanic Chamber gave me an award. That's my background, okay? So as far as Paula Sardina is going and getting this bogus temporary protection order against me. She's trying to get it so that I can't even present at public hearings where she might be present. Now, uh, Mr. Postman, you're a First Amendment scholar as well. You're a journalist. We went through this before, okay? Uh, that's called like unlawful prior restraint, duh, all right? So can't do that. And all of this happened after I brought out and I showed those text messages from Aaron Barfield where he said, who, by the way, I worked with Black Excellence and Cannabis and Emerald Hayes, many of us did, okay? Uh, West, Novak, me, others, okay? It's a fact. And I have emails, you've seen them. So after he said that Jim Buchanan stole uh, like a million dollars from our partner, Dr. Raphael, and that there was a forensic audit for 300,000 he stole, worst partner ever, that's subjective. All those things I put out there. And then right after that, I'm allegedly a dangerous person. Is that right? That's, that's funny because, you know, I don't think Steve Dunnelback would say so. And he's like the next ATF director. We grew up together. All right, that's me and him right there. All right. You know, I, I give talks with police chiefs. That's the police chief of Somerset Mass. Okay. I don't think any of those people are going to say that I'm dangerous. That's ridiculous. Okay. And the, the notion that I, I, that when I said I'm going to smoke up my coho, that I'm going to go kill these people and saute them or, or, or smoke, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Another thing that's unfair. Uh, so wh where's the investigation about that? You, you have Buchanan there. Then how can we can't find out how they got licenses? I've been asking that forever. Why can't we find out what happened to the application in the envelope that was I've shown you a million times sent in by Kevin Shelton on behalf of, of LifeTree? I've shown you guys the declaration I wrote with his lawyer saying that he was an exemplary store. These are questions I'm asking. I'm not attacking Ali Garrett. If I had been attacking Ali Garrett unlawfully, you have time, place, and manner restrictions, don't you? You could ban me from the meetings. That's the law. But there's been no effort to do that because I've never done any of that. It's nonsense. And the last thing is, Ms. Garrett, with regarding the death of the murder of your brother, I wasn't going to talk about that publicly, but that's what your, your buddy put in the public record. And she said that I offered a token apology for it. She put it public. I didn't. And she left out half of what I said. Here's what I said. I said, I was not aware of that, but it does not appear to be public knowledge. Obviously, since I don't know her personally, uh, it's not public. I'm not going to write her directly, but you may most certainly feel free to send my heartfelt regards. I have seen clients and their friends murdered. I've had two friends murdered, and it is a horrific experience all around. Chris, you have 30 seconds. Thank you. Okay, and now that I'm aware of this, you better believe I took a moment to send a prayer for his soul, his family, and for apprehension and appropriate punishment of the perpetrator. That's the kind of man I am. And I'm tired of being vilified while people are saying that I'm trying to vilify Ollie. It's nonsense. People are watching this. We're going to start our international podcast tomorrow, and that's going to be that. Have a great day. Thank you. Thank you. The next person we have signed up is Peter Manning. Good afternoon, board members, Ollie Garrett, uh, Mr. Postman, and Kit uh, Volendroff. Mr. Volendroff, can you guys hear me? Yeah, we can. You bet. I'm at work, so 
Hold on. Hey, I, I want to say that my, my concern, uh, okay, yeah, there you go. My concern is, I know that the rules are coming out here um, uh, July 6th, potentially. Uh, we in the black community and the black access of cannabis, we're concerned because I understand through chatter and whatnot that there's not going to be any type of race-based language. What is the board or how does the board propose to take care of those individuals that social equity was started for? You know, I was there at the, at the onset of drawing the attention that we needed social equity because black and brown people were virtually excu excluded from the market or the industry. How are we going to correct that? Um, or do we plan on using any type of race-based language in that? Um, how are we going to help that those those communities that were affected by the war on drugs obtain an opportunity to be included in the new cannabis industry here in Washington, which is like seven years old now? Um, what's what's our approach there? How are we going to deal with that? Thank you. That's it. And you guys have a great day. But I have a question. That's it. Just it. Thank you very much. Okay. Thanks, Peter. Uh, next person signed up is uh, Mike Asai. Uh, good morning, board members. Uh, Garrett, can everyone hear me? You bet. Morning, Mike. Okay, great. Good morning, board member uh, Garrett, uh, Postman and Ballandraw. Uh, and also, uh, good morning to the public. Uh, I'm going to be real brief. Uh, my public comments is pertaining to the uh, upcoming uh, draft uh, rules for the social equity uh, program. And uh, as I had stated before in regards to the race space, I believe it should be used. Uh, but today or this morning, I want to speak in regards to the uh, mobility. Uh, as I have seen and most have read uh, on page 10 of the draft, uh, it states social equity licenses that are currently designated to specific cities may be located anywhere within the county in which the city is located. However, the license may not be transferred outside of that jurisdiction. Okay, well, my biggest issue with this is uh, I see what the LCB is trying to make the licenses mobile within a county. And we've been told that from the beginning uh, from the task force that the licenses could only be mobile, period, by legislative action. So I question uh, the ability by the LCB uh, and how they can make the licenses mobile within the county, but not the state. And as I dug deeper, um, and if someone from the LCB can correct me, I don't believe there is legislative action that is needed to make these licenses mobile and to make a mobile statewide. And this is why uh, in WAC 314-55079, uh, number, two, uh, number 2A, it states, the number of retail locations will be determined using a method that distributes the number of locations proportionate to the most populous cities within each county and to accommodate the medical needs of qualifying patients and designated providers, des sorry, designated providers. Locations not, locations not being used for, I'm sorry, locations not needs of qualifying patients, locations not assigned to a specific city will be at large. At large locations can be used for unincorporated areas in the county or in the, in cities within the county that have no retail licenses designated. The number of retail licenses determined by the board can be found on the WLCB website. So in reading that, okay, um, it, it, it doesn't say anything legislatively. It, it, it says that the board has full authority to create the number. Um, and we know what I'm stating is not the board is not creating new licenses. We're talking about the 40 that's in the pot for social equity and the 40 that's in the pot need to be made mobile so the social equity applicant can move that, take that license, whether it's Tacoma, Seattle, Everett, wherever city doesn't have a, a max allotment themselves. Because currently out of the 40, 24 are in banned county and cities. And I don't think the board thinks, I mean, it's not, it won't be social equity um, board members. And uh, we're asking, Emerald City Collective is asking 
uh, the community is asking for the right thing to be done to make these licenses uh, equitable for social equity applicants. Uh, so that's all I had to say today. Thank you for your time and everyone have a great day. Appreciate it. Great. Thanks for your time. Uh, Mr. Sai, we, I will, we'll get someone to send an answer to that. I, 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 very confident about the statute related to mobile statewide, but we'll we'll have somebody send it with the statutes uh, for you to to make all that clear, both for that and within the county. So thanks for the question. Uh, next person uh, we have signed up is uh, Kevin Shelton. Uh, good morning, Chair. This is Dustin. Kevin Shelton registered to speak, but is not online with us today. Roger that. OK, uh, thank you. Then that is the last person we have signed up. Um, and that is our last item on the agenda, unless uh, board members have any parting comments today. None. OK, uh, well, thanks, everybody. Um, and uh, we will convene again this afternoon for an executive management team. So have a good day. We will adjourn. Great. Thank you.